Hey there guys, thanks for tuning in. So, I uploaded a video a while back on Modafinil, um, the real limitless drug, and that was very popular. It's actually the number one video on YouTube if you just search Modafinil, so that's worked out well. Um, as you could imagine, that's led to quite a few questions. It seems people are very interested in Modafinil, how it works, and some of the uh, smaller um, aspects of it. So I thought I'd answer some of the most common ones here in this video, uh, hopefully answer some of your questions and give you a bit more insight into this nootropic and how it works. So, randomly, one of the questions I've received the most, which I wouldn't have expected, is, is modafinil useful for exercise? Will it help give you more energy, more focus in the gym? And my personal experience on that is no, not at all. That's because, A, for me, it increases heart rate um, in a similar manner as um, caffeine, and B, because it seems to affect my sleep negatively, meaning I'm kind of tired, um, exhausted, just don't have much energy to focus. It's more kind of like I'm being kept awake against my will when I take modafinil as opposed to I have loads of extra boundless energy. Um, some of the uh, pre-workouts designed to increase energy in the gym are made from caffeine, just lots of caffeine essentially, and people say that they like those. I don't think it's a great idea, but if you want to give that a go, then sure, go ahead. But personally, my experience, no. In fact, one of the reasons I decided I didn't want to use modafinil on a regular basis was that I would run out of energy, and as a result, my workouts suffered and I got thinner. So I would say no to that one. One of the things that modafinil and uh, caffeine do to increase your energy levels is to increase um, noradrenaline, norepinephrine, which is one of the fight or flight response hormones. There are other ways you can induce that. Um, for instance, even doing a cardio workout, a small cardio workout at the beginning will increase adrenaline. A cold shower will increase, and increase adrenaline. It will wake you up and get you focused, help get rid of the brain fog. So that's something um, that you can use uh, instead. You know, do a quick cardio workout, quick warm up. That will actually have a very similar effect uh, to um, taking some kind of caffeine based uh, pre-workout. So yeah, modafinil for pre-workout, new is, is the answer to that. As for losing weight, I imagine modafinil could be a little bit useful. It is an appetite suppressant. You find that you work for ages. I think it's an appetite suppressant because you're so focused on whatever you're doing that you don't actually feel hungry. Whether or not that's healthy, I'm not sure. Again, I wouldn't recommend using it for that. However, if I'm being honest, then yes, it probably could be useful for losing weight, but just don't. <laughs> also, increasing your heart rate and your adrenaline and stuff before workout is just not a good idea. I mean, you're already increasing your heart rate um, and adrenaline during the workout, so you don't want to give yourself heart palpitations, and then, yeah, especially if you wouldn't use it, if you're going to do something like Tabata or so I've got a very intensive CD, I think it could have completely the adverse effect when you feel quite ill, so, yes, I've reiterated that a few times, but definitely for working out, no, not really, don't use it for that purpose, certainly. What would be a much more logical question, though, is how does Modafinil work? That's something that see, people seem to ask surprisingly little, but um, I still feel it's worth mentioning, um, and that's the problem. We don't actually know 100% how uh, modafinil works. There's a theory that it affects the um, orexins, which are a type of neurotransmitter um, that triggers orexin neurons, and these neurons uh, reach into certain parts of the brain to deal with wakefulness. Remember that modafinil is originally supposed to be a, um, a wakefulness drug, it's supposed to treat narcolepsy. So that's its main function, um, and this affects a range of neurotransmitters which have been uh, seen to rise in the brain when someone's using modafinil. They include dopamine, they include uh, noradrenaline, norepinephrine, um, they include serotonin, um, it, it reduces GABA and it increases histamines. So really this is very similar actually to the results you get when you take caffeine. It basically amps the body up, puts you in a kind of fight or flight mode. Dopamine is the reward neurotransmitter, that's what many people know it as, um, but it doesn't, it's not actually that simple, it's not so much that um, dopamine gives you that sense of reward that you get from doing things, rather it's used as a way to kind of cement an action, so if you do something and dopamine is uh, released, then you're more likely to do it next time, it's a kind of reinforcing, and so in a way it kind of tells you what's important, so more dopamine in your brain means essentially more attention, this increases uh, the neural activity in your brain, and to respond to that, your brain also increases its release of noradrenaline, norepinephrine, which gives you much even more focus, along with dopamine, it gives you 
more focused, lets you uh, um, have a more tunnel vision rather than your brain wandering off uh, through the myriad networks of your mind. Um, so this basically gives you that kind of tunnel vision, allows you to focus on something, keeps you awake as well because GABA and histamines um, are both related to your sleep. More GABA means you're more sleepy, uh, fewer histamines means you're more sleepy. Um, so you're, you're more awake, you're more focused, but you're also potentially less creative. Uh, I go into detail on this on my blog, I talk a lot more about how it works. But that's the basics. So in a way it's kind of like super caffeine, except we don't 100% know how it works. And what's important to remember is that as you change the uh, neurochemistry of your brain, it adapts over time. Um, this is how you build up tolerance to any drug, caffeine included. Um, and if you're building up tolerance, that basically means you'll have fewer of those uh, neurotransmitters in your brain uh, by default. So if you use modafinil all the time, um, then you're, as Dave Asprey does, <laughs> then you're almost guaranteed to reduce the amount of dopamine that your brain produces naturally. So you might find that eventually you find it more difficult to focus. Um, this also means it could potentially be addictive. There's no studies to show that modafinil is addictive and it's supposed to have no side effect, although I mentioned in my last video that I did experience some side effects myself. But anything that increases dopamine, the reward hormone, is likely to be addictive in some fashion. And it's also, of course, psychologically addictive because you feel like you've done better work, so you're more likely to want to use it again. So um, that's the basics of how it works. You can get more detail on my website. Um, not, we don't really know 100% how it works, and that's a problem. Um, so to me, that's a good reason not to use it, but certainly not to use it on a regular basis. Remember as well, um, that neurotransmitters have a kind of cascading effect. If one gets increased, that increases brain activity, that releases, that re um, leads to an increase of another neurotransmitter, which meanwhile drops another one. So you might take it for one purpose and find that there's all kinds of uh, knock-on effects throughout the brain. Um, it's not a very precise method to use any nootropic to try and change your brain chemistry. You really want a scalpel, and this is like using a shotgun. So, yeah, be careful with that. And again, I wouldn't recommend using it the only time I would say that it's probably useful to use um, nootropics is, is in a kind of very precise fashion. When you want to learn something, um, modafinil can increase your uh, memory retention in the same ways that uh, caffeine can in increase your focus. So I'd recommend not using it, but then if you really must uh, toy around with these things, which I, which I don't think is terribly safe, but if you really must use it um, occasionally, uh, as a kind of weapon to really enhance your learning. Because you've used it less often, it'll be more effective, and at the same time, you won't get the, um, you won't get the same long-term side effects which could come from tolerance. Somebody asked me how modafinil affected gaming, which is quite interesting. And uh, one thing I did find actually is I was playing Super Hexagon, and I actually noticed myself getting better at Super Hexagon quicker than I probably would have done otherwise. Um, when I was using the modafinil, was in, I was already playing it and I tried it for a bit whilst using modafinil and during that time uh, my performance on that game increased faster so I was more able to more quickly progress through the levels. Uh, that makes sense if you think of it um, in terms of the focus and the memory again, uh, building more neural connections. It could essentially slightly enhance plasticity. I'm not going to you know, say that as definite, I don't think there's any studies suggesting that, but I think it's possible. Um, so, again, if you're going to learn a new language or something, you might want to use it just once or twice to kind of really have a cram session. Um, if it can improve reaction times and things like that. It is used by sprinters, which is interesting. Sprinters like to use it in order to increase their reaction time, getting off the starting line when they hear the gun. So it can make you a little quicker to respond, which is because you're in the uh, fight or flight response mode. The last thing is alternatives, are there any safe or healthy alternatives? And sure, I mean, caffeine is an alternative, although that has its own drawbacks. If you try something a little more potent, like yerba mate tea, that has caffeine in it, as well as two other xanthines. Um, and apparently Charles Darwin said it's the perfect stimulant. I didn't love it, but you know, there are other things you can toy around with which are a little safer, easy to come by, and uh, less concerning than modafinil. But really, I think the best alternatives are things like increasing your sleep, which will 100% make you much better, much more focused, much happier, much more creative, all these things, um, and improve your body. Um, getting more sunlight, which is great for your brain, and for wakefulness, you know, um, melatonin is produced 
uh, when we're in dark rooms. So you know, keep yourself in in the light, and you're going to stay more awake. Um, exercise is fantastic for improving your memory, for increasing your attention, and as I said, you can even use it in the short term to increase adrenaline. A cold shower. Um, your diet is highly important and more for long-term effects, which are much more useful than just giving yourself that one burst. So as much as the idea of a nootropic like adapnil that can uh, increase your uh, focus and change your brain in, in amazing ways like in Limitless might be appealing, uh, it's actually probably not that smart in the long run because you're changing your brain in ways you don't really know, you're creating side effects, you might cause some kind of um, adaption which you didn't intend and apart from anything else you don't really know how it works it's like just messing it's like when you're trying to fix a VCR and you just bang it it's what you're doing with your brain when you use a nootropic or anything really we just um, don't understand enough of it and we don't have the decision we need to kind of make those fine-tuned changes and um, thanks for watching I'll see you next time adios